Okay, so for this tutorial, we're going to go over some pretty basic rendering techniques. Um, just, you know, creating um, some lights, um, some textures, some color, messing around a little bit with materials. And we're going to try and get to sort of this kind of a final image. Um, so I've added like a texture to sort of that wood base. Um, I've added sort of a white metal to all of the metal work, um, a texture map of wood to the cabinetry on the inside, um, and a little bit of marble down on the fireplace. Um, and then there's two lights that are involved with this to produce the shadows um, that occur. Um, so we're just going to kind of walk through this a little bit. Um, just an FYI, you guys need to kind of pay attention to your rendering times if you're going to start adding textures and lights and all that kind of stuff. Um, your rendering times are going to get longer, which means your animation times are going to get much longer. Um, so let's kind of run through. Um, we're going to use the Farnsworth house model um, that we had from the import-export um, tutorial. And we'll just kind of use this as a base. And um, so we'll just kind of go with that. Um, so let's start adding some light. So right now, if I select these materials and I go into the attribute editor and I go up to this arrow and I scroll, keep clicking until I get all the way to the right, it's got this default Lambert applied to that material, which is just the default gray color. Okay. Um, if I click the render button, the rendering is going to show up black. Okay. It's because there are no lights in our scene yet. Um, what I've had you guys do in previous tutorials is use that ambient occlusion material, which doesn't require a light. Um, but unfortunately, that material doesn't really accept color, it doesn't accept shadows, it doesn't accept different material presets. Um, so you can't really use it if you want to start producing a um, more photorealistic um, image. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to kind of run through first how to create a light so you guys can see the effect that that has and then how to apply different materials based on um, the sort of effects we want to have um, for this model. Um, I am going to hide the roof so you can select this and do control H to turn off the roof. That way when we do the renderings you can see the inside. It's just a little bit nicer of a rendering. Um, so let's start with lights so we can start to light our scene. I use two basic lights. And we're going to come up here, and usually we're under Poly Modeling tab. I'm going to switch to our Rendering tab, and you're going to see all these lights pop up. Um, I use a directional light, and I use an area light. Okay, um, Directional light is going to light the majority of the scene, and it's going to provide us with shadows. An area light is going to be a more focused light on the model so that um, we can light more specific points of our scene. So I'm just going to click down directional light and if you hit F on your keyboard while it's selected in your outliner you're going to zoom in and you're going to get this like four arrow directional light. Okay, It's going to be kind of small so you can scale it up or on your keyboard. I'm going to push it up into the sky and then I'm going to rotate it and rotate it so it's kind of like at a 45 degree to the model. Now this light creates a blanket of light across the model in that direction. Okay, It doesn't matter if this is here, way down here, way up here. All the light is coming from like almost outside the scene as if it were like from the sun. Um, and it produces really good um, nice hard shadows. So we're not going to change any of the settings, and we're just going to hit the render button so you guys can see what that effect has. Okay, so we get this pretty bland, dark, gray rendering. Okay, and that's what the default, um, that Lambert 1 default material looks like. 
Um, so let's start applying some materials to this so we can see how this lighting affects different materials. Um, we'll close out this. Um, let's start with that sort of white metal material, um, which I'm going to apply to all the metal work, the stairs. I'm also going to apply it to the tiles um, and then all the metal work around the glass and the structure. So I'm going to select the window frames, tiles, structure, steel angles, stairs, um, floors, let's see, and I think that'll be it. Okay, so in order to apply material, I'm going to hold down, right click, and assign new material and release. Um, I'm going to come down, so white metal is a pretty difficult material to create, um, but Arnold has made it a little bit easier, so I'm going to click under Arnold, um, and you'll notice I'm going to switch back and forth between Maya materials and Arnold materials based on the kind of effect that I'm looking for. Metal is best done using this Arnold material. We're going to come down and click this AI standard surface, and just click that and it's going to apply that material to that selection. Okay, Color, I'm going to keep pumped up all the way, and so it's, it'll be white. And then the weight, I'm also going to bring that all the way up. Okay, um, If you turn off your um, edges for this, because we don't really want those on when we're messing with materials, um, you can kind of see what that looks like. So again, I'm going to select this, That'll allow me to, in my attribute editor, select that material, and the weight will kind of make it brighter or darker. Again, I want this to be like white, so I'm going to pump it all the way up to one. That's really the only thing you have to mess around with this. It's going to have some reflectivity already built into it. So let's see what happens when I render this out now. Okay, cool. So what you can see is now those metal pieces are starting to take on a much lighter material and they're starting to bring in um, just some really basic reflections, which is all we really want for now. Okay, um, so we're going to leave that as is. But what I want to do is kind of make this scene a little bit brighter so this doesn't kind of hold that sort of grayishness to it. I want it to really pop as a white material. So I'm going to close this. And we're going to bring in our second light source, which is going to be that area light. So I'm going to come up here and click area light. And I'm going to scale this up so it's much bigger. I'm just going to kind of move this over. And then rotate it so it's aiming down at the model. Okay, and then I might just kind of back this up a little bit. Um, now the location of this light matters. Unlike this one, um, if this light is way down here, it's not going to shine any light on this model. Likewise, if it's like really close, it's going to be super bright. And if it's further away, it's going to be a little bit more dim. So I'm going to kind of position it a little bit out here. Okay. And then while I've got this light selected, I'm going to go into the attribute editor. And under intensity, this has to be pumped up really high, so like 15,000, okay? If it's lower, if it's like really low, you won't see any difference, okay? So just know that that number's got to really be thrown up really high. So then I'm going to come in here, and let's re-render this so we can see what that light effect has. Um, now, instead of just hitting the render button, I'm going to open up, I'm going to click this little movie clip with the eyeball. That's going to open up the previous rendering we did. Um, now I want to see kind of the difference between this render and the new one with the new light. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag with my left mouse button. I'm just going to select an area of this rendering and it's going to create this red box. Now what I'm going to do is come up to here and I'm going to click render region. And what it's going to do is only render what's inside 
that red box. And that's kind of nice because what it means I can do is then wait for that to finish. And then I can just kind of click away over here and you can immediately see kind of the difference between the two colors. Okay, so this is with the new light. It's kind of got that more white feel to it. It's got that sort of metallic metal feel to it. It pops a little bit more. Um, and so that's a, a quick way of kind of seeing differences between images. Um, so that's sort of like our white metal color. So let's come in here then and let's add a material to the glass, and make it a little bit transparent. So I'm going to select the glass, hold down right click, assign new material. And this time I'm going to go to Maya and I'm going to select a blend. Okay. Um, Maya has kind of three basic um, starting materials. You have your Lambert, your blend, and your Fong. Okay, I don't ever use the rest of these. Um, Lambert is for like really dull materials that have no reflection to them. So like brick, unpolished concrete, um, carpet, um, you know, texture fabrics, things like that. Um, Blend has a little bit of reflectivity to it. So I tend to use this for um, glass you can make blend transparent so i use it for glass um, i'll also use it for things like wood that has um, a kind of a glossy finish to it um, and then i'll also use blend if i'm doing like polished concrete fong your third material that's like car paint so it's like super ref reflective it's got like kind of hot, um, hot spots where things shine off of it um, it's got like really nice um, reflectivity values um, and it actually does kind of look like car paint. So if I'm doing like metals like brass, I'll use Fong. Um, or if I'm doing like a high paint metal, you can use this. The Fong just doesn't pick up white very well, which is why I use the other um, Arnold material for that white metal. Um, so let's do our glass. So I'm going to click blend. I'm going to change the color. You don't want to go too crazy with blue, but I like to have just a little bit of blue in it as if it's like reflecting the sky. Um, you don't want to go crazy. So just keep it like really nice and subtle. All right. And then under transparency, I'm just going to pull this down and we'll see what like I'm going to go like three quarters of the way with it. Um, and then let's kind of render that out and see how that looks. Um, and again, you guys want to kind of watch your render times. You're going to notice that things start to take quite a bit longer to render. And again, when you're doing animations, that really starts to matter. Um, so now we're starting to get some transparency through our glass. Um, and the blue isn't picking up too much yet, so I might make it just slightly more blue um, so it doesn't have that kind of gray, boring feel to it. So we'll select that. Um, we'll go to our blend tab under our attribute editor, that's that material, select the color. I'm just going to pump the blue over just a little bit more. Um, and we'll leave that there. Okay, so that's our white metal and our blue glass. Um, the next thing let's look at is creating sort of a wood textured material for all this cabinetry here. Um, so I'm going to hold down right click, assign new material, use my blend because I want kind of like a glossy finished wood look. And then it's going to pull up our attributes over here under the attribute editor. And this is going to be blend 2. Um, now I want to add a texture to this. I don't want it to be just a color. So what I'm going to do is over to the right where it says color, you're going to see this checkered box. I'm going to click that going to pull up the sub menu. Okay. 
um, I'm going to load a file into this color, which is going to be our texture map. Um, I went online, um, found a couple textures, which I'll make sure you guys have available to you. Um, let's see where I put those. So I've got kind of this wood texture, okay? Um, I've got a marble texture, and I've got this grass texture, okay? Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click File in this menu, and that's going to open up this new sub-menu. So it's, you kind of got to keep track of all the different menus that pop up and get a little confusing, but I'll show you how to navigate through them. Um, when you click file, that sub-menu is going to go away. This menu is going to pop up, and it's going to give a location to load an image um, right here. So I'm going to click on the folder. I'm going to navigate to where I saved that image. Um, that's our seamless wood. Click that. Um, and now you're not going to see anything show yet. And that's because we don't have our textures turned on. So what you're going to do is come up to this little circle here with all the checkers on it and click that. And it's going to turn on textures. Okay. Um, now if you look at the way this is text textured, it isn't very accurate, right? Like all the textures are different sizes depending on the surface it's applied to. They're all over in different directions and things like that. Um, so that's the first thing we want to fix, okay? What we're going to do is select our object. We're going to go up to UV, and we're going to go and click Automatic. That's by far the best texturing option. I don't mess around with any of these other things unless I'm doing really weird geometry. I'm just going to click Automatic. And what it's going to do is reset that texture so it maps correctly to all of this geometry, okay? Now, it's still a little oversized, right? That grain is way too big. So I'm going to select the object under my attribute editor. I'm going to click all the way over to I see my material, this blend 2. Click that. Now you'll notice after I load the file, our checkered box turns into this little square with a black arrow. I'm going to click that. It's going to be, bring me back to where I loaded that image. So if you ever want to change the image, you can come here and change it. But I'm going to come up to this little tab up here that says Place 2D Texture 1. I'm going to click that. Okay. This is where you um, set how many times that texture repeats over a surface. So basically the density of that texture. So what I'm going to do is under Repeat UV, I'm going to set this to 20 and 20. Okay. And now that texture is going to look way more refined. Okay. Um, and that looks pretty good in terms of size. You could probably go a little bit smaller if you wanted, but I'm going to leave it there. Um, so let's render that and see how that looks with our lights. So it looks kind of dull. Um, again, we always want to try and get that like kind of nice pop to it. So I'm going to escape out of this. Close this. I'm going to select this. Um, in order to make that look a little brighter, we're going to grab the diffuse option under our material. So again, go into your attribute editor after you select the object. Click all the way over. Grab your blend to tab. Under diffuse, I'm going to throw this all the way up. And you'll kind of notice that texture um, preview up here gets brighter so like that's way down and that's way up so I'm going to put that really high up and then um, reflectivity I'm going to turn this down a little bit because wood gloss doesn't really reflect that much um, if you put this all the way up that's going to be like a mirror so halfway is a little too high so I'm going to set this to like 0.24 somewhere around there um, and then let's see you can kind of mess around with some of these other things if you want to. Just try to remember what the defaults are set to. Um, and we can just kind of go from there. So let's 
see what that looks like now. So it's starting to look a little brighter. Um, and I think I'll probably just kind of leave it there. Um, you can let it finish rendering if you want it to. Um, but that looks pretty good. Okay. Um, so I'm going to escape out of this and just kind of leave that as it is. Um, now the next thing I'm going to add a texture map to is this little fireplace piece because that is in our view so I'm going to hold down right click assign new material I'm going to use another blend so I'm going to come under Maya and grab a blend I'm going to come over to my material settings this is now blend 3 I'm going to click the checkered box click file um, you'll notice it didn't load the uh, menu that allows me to pick an image you just have to switch over from your tab up here to file tab and then that folder spot will pop up click this grab my um, top view natural this is the marble image so I'll open that up it's gonna pop that marble on there and I'm gonna select it go to UV automatic go back in the object mode and that mapping actually looks pretty good I don't really need to change the size of it at all so I'm just gonna leave it the way it is I am going to make it a little brighter though. Just pump up that diffuse option. Okay, um, then let's add our grass texture. So I'm going to select this guy, hold down right click, sign new material. Now, grass is a very matte material, it doesn't have a lot of reflection to it. So I'm going to use a, a um, Lambert for this. So click Lambert, grab my color, click File load that file, grab our grass texture, click open. Obviously it's way too big, but I'm going to set my UVs to automatic first. And then I'm going to select this, go over to my attribute editor, grab my Lambert 2 tab, and I'm going to click this arrow, click place our 2D texture, and I'm going to set this to like 15 and 15. Okay, now the problem with most texturing is that you get a tiling effect where you see the image start to repeat. Um, there are ways of removing it. That's a very advanced method of texturing. It involves um, some other software, some um, other Autodesk software that actually allows you to go in and like paint textures on. You can also do grass as a physical piece of geometry, but I'm not really going to get into that for this. Um, the easiest way to help with that tiling effect is to come under here and you have this mirror U and mirror V. What that's going to do is mirror the texture map as it goes across the surface. And so because it's being mirrored, you don't really get that hard line anymore. You get it a little bit, but it's definitely better than that. Okay, it's not perfect, but it'll be okay for this. So that's kind of our texture. Um, that Lambert, I am going to up the diffuse just a little bit and have something like that. So I'm gonna zoom out a little bit and take that rendering. Let's see what this starts to look like. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Um, again, you're going to see kind of the tiling from the grass, but it's not too bad when you zoom out and are pretty far away from it. You start to lose that kind of tiling effect. 
Um, and then you can kind of see where that area light is kind of highlighting the model. You know, because I have it pointing directly at the Farnsworth house, that area is going to be lit up a little bit more, which is kind of a nice effect. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm actually going to move that area light up just a little bit. Kind of just sneak it in over here, something like that. And then pull it over to the center. So it's kind of highlighting the whole model evenly. Okay. Um, and then um, let's add a texture map to our wood kind of base or border. So I'm going to go right click, assign new material. Now, I could assign the same material that is applied to this. The problem is the mapping technique to this geometry might be different from this. So I'm going to want it to be its own material. So I'll hold down, right click, assign new material, grab that blend, checkered box, file, file for, load that seamless wood texture, select this, UV, automatic, select it, go back to our blend, which this is now blend 4. I'm going to up the diffuse, I'm going to lower our reflectivity of this. Down here, I'm going to lower our reflectivity to 5. Um, and then we're going to change the um, tiling of this so the grain looks a lot smaller. So let's go with like 10 and 10. So that you get a nice grain texture that way. Okay. Um, that should be just about everything. So we can kind of send sort of a final render. Before we do that, let's um, let's create a camera. So I'm going to go create camera and aim. Click the options box again. Make sure I'm at orthographic. Let's create this. Going to pull this out. Pull it up. Grab the aim. Pull this over. Pull this over, kind of center that. Pull this over, up. And then I'm going to come out. I'm going to switch one of my other viewports to that camera one. I'm going to turn off the edges of that camera, turn on the textures. Again, I'm like really far zoomed in, so I'm going to select that camera, go into its attributes, scroll down. Orthographic view. I'm going to set this to like 150 so it zooms out. And I'll enter that view. Turn on your film gate so you can kind of see what you're rendering. And I'm going to just kind of mess around with the aim a little bit just to sort of center this guy some. I'm going to mess around with the view of the camera as well. I just come down a little bit and just want to see what happens if I come over some. It doesn't look much better. Okay, we'll stick with something, you know, like this. You grab the aim, just kind of pull that up some. All right, so we got this. Then we'll just send a quick test render see what this guy looks like.
Okay, so not too bad overall. You're getting some good grain, or some good wood texture in the middle here. It's got a little bit of sheen to it. Um, you're picking up some reflections along the glass. Um, this white metal material is coming out pretty good. It's got some good pop to it. The grass looks okay. And then you got this kind of wood um, case sort of around the side of the model. And again, I just kind of produced that wood border as more or less a way of not having to model all of the environment around the screen. It just kind of gives an end to the rendering. Um, it's sort of a different effect. Um, it kind of treats this more as like you're filming a physical scale model rather than an actual rendering, which to me is okay because this is more a di more of a diagrammatic rendering than it is, you know, about perspective rendering and being in the place and that sort of a thing. Um, so this looks pretty good. I'm going to come up to here and do a quick file, save image. Um, I'm going to send this to this kind of a folder location. I'm going to type, I'm going to call this um, color rendering and hit save. Now, when I go to open that image after I have saved it, okay, this is my color rendering. Okay, it's super dark, okay? I haven't quite figured out why that occurs. I think it has something to do with um, the render settings when you go to save it out. All this is is a levels issue in Photoshop. So I'm gonna open this um, in Photoshop. Um, and you can do this in After Effects too. There's a spot to mess around with the levels of a video, so it's the same exact process. Um, what you'll do is I come down here, add a levels, and then you kind of just want to pull these over to start to brighten up your scene. Okay, and I usually just mess around with the middle one and just kind of leave it there. You can start to up this as well if you want to bring a little bit extra light. You don't want to overdo it though because you're trying not to over blow or like blow out the edges of these tiles. You kind of want to try and maintain those as best you can. Um, so we'll just kind of do something like that until it starts to look the way we want it to. Okay. And obviously you can go in and do all your other Photoshop effects to this brightness contrast, you know, try and pump up. Um, the image, again, like brightness, contrast, levels, hue, saturation, all of that stuff is available in After Effects too. You can just do a quick online YouTube tutorial on how to edit and modify those. Um, so that's that. Um, you know, we can apply a white background to this. Um, and then if you want, um, there's one extra step that we can do that'll really make the image kind of pop in terms of shadows and highlights. Um, basically what we're going to do is overlay an occlusion render on top of this color render. And I'll show you the different effects that that's going to give us. So I'm going to do a quick file, save, oh, well, save this scene first. So um, I don't want to overwrite one of my other files. So I'll do a quick file save scene. I'm going to call this file house um, Farnsworth color and save it. And then I'm going to do another file save as. And I'm going to call this one ambient occlusion and I'm going to save that. So now I've got a new file um, and I'm going to start messing around with all these textures. So the first thing I'm going to do is delete both lights. I don't need those anymore. I'm going to select all of the material. Um, I'm going to, uh, let's see, hold down right click. Um, 
assign new material. I'm going to click that AI ambient occlusion material. Okay. And without moving the camera, that's really important. We don't want to screw around with the position of this camera because we're going to overlay two images on top of each other, and we don't, and we want them to align perfectly. Um, if you want to maintain this camera, if you like, if you're worried that you're going to accidentally move it, you can go to View. Um, let's see, you go to Bookmarks, Edit Bookmarks, and create new bookmark. That's going to save that view. So if you ever accidentally move this camera, you can go back to view, bookmarks, and click camera view one, and it'll switch you back. Um, but we're just going to render this out real quick. I'm going to get something that looks a little like this. Um, and this is kind of like our standard ambient occlusion material. Um, it's a little grainy. So I'm going to up the kind of render quality of this image. I'll select just one of the pieces of geometry so I can go to my ambient occlusion. I'm going to up the samples to five. I'm also going to up my near clip plane and my far clip plane. You can change these, and it's going to change the way that ambient occlusion looks a little bit. It just looks a little darker pulls in the shadows a little more. You're going to notice that the dark areas are a little bit less grainy. Um, so that looks pretty good. And we'll let this wrap up. Um, and we'll do a quick file, save image. I'm going to just call this um, occlusion render. Save it as a PNG. Always save images as a PNG. Click save. Close this. I'm going to minimize this. Um, go to that folder location. Um, I'm going to open up that occlusion rendering. In Photoshop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this, edit, copy. I'm going to paste that on top of my levels layer. So I'll do edit, paste special, paste in place. And that image is going to fall right on top. And then what you want to do is you want to set your blending type to either multiply or you can do overlay. Overlay is going to make things really high contrast and it's going to make certain light areas pop a lot more. Um, but you can also kind of cycle through and just see the different effects that this kind of produces. I usually just go with either overlay or multiply. Multiply is going to darken in areas that are dark, and overlay is going to lighten areas that are light. That's kind of the difference between those two um, blending effects. So I'm going to set it to multiply, and then I'm going to set the opacity to 50%, so it's not affecting the image that much. Um, and if I toggle this on and off, you can kind of see the difference between having this and not having it. So you'll notice like in areas like this where it's a little like flat in terms of lighting, when I toggle this back on, it's going to get much darker. Okay. So it's just kind of like giving the image a little bit more pop. And then you can also set it to overlay if you really want it to like make things a lot brighter again you want to make sure you're not like blowing out detail though i'm losing some of the grid pattern here so you might take the opacity of this and turn it down a little bit just to bring some of that back some um, but you can do either or i tend to prefer multiply because again it kind of maintains some um, areas that you might lose because the lighting's too bright or something like that um, and then, you know, we might add in a um, brightness contrast if we want to try and up the brightness just a little bit. And then add some contrast to it as well. Add quite a bit and it starts to look pretty nice. Um, and then maybe we do a 
you can do a photo filter just to kind of change the overall hue of the image. Um, try not to mess around with these too much. I don't think it, this probably doesn't really need it. Um, so I'm going to delete that. And we'll just stick with something like this. And then we'll just do a file, save as. Just do a JPEG, because this is our final image. And click save. Then we'll just kind of pull that final color rendering up, and you're left with this. Um, so all of those edits I just did in Photoshop, again, you can do those to our image sequence in After Effects. Um, you don't like do not go through every single frame of your animation and edit the images like this. That's not how you do it. Um, you pull the image sequence in the After Effects and edit the levels to the animation um, and apply the contrast. The overlays, After Effects has blending modes, all that kind of stuff. Um, so a couple, there's plenty of tutorials online on how to mess around with. Um, all of those kinds of effects. But that's how you add textures, lights, and materials to any scene. That's a really basic intro. Um, I know it's not like the most photorealistic thing, but um, it just kind of adds another layer of detail to what is, you know, typically a kind of boring diagrammatic image.